my name is Gasha Okunfe and uh, we're here at uh, my coffee uh, state plantation uh, which the size is like 618 hectares which is uh, about 1525 uh, acres and uh, what I do here is uh, try to produce in the market uh, best possible uh, the special coffee to the world market to the consumers in the United States especially in uh, Europe tell us a little bit about your uh, own history so because you live in the US and how, how did you get back to Ethiopia after living in the United States for about 20 years uh, I came back uh, to Ethiopia to visit my family and uh, and things were cool then after you know when I came back things were like uh, in a better shape than they were before I left so my father uh, who is a farmer uh, really encouraged me to stay here and uh, uh, continue on uh, his work uh, which was uh, mostly producing cotton in the sesame seed in northern Ethiopia but I didn't like the climate there and uh, sesame seeds and cotton plantation don't like trees so we have to get so many trees and probably damage the ecos I didn't believe that so I had uh, to find other places in southern Ethiopia uh, very dense forest and the ecosystem is very uh, suitable to plant uh, coffee than anything else so that led me to plant coffee trees which are still abandoned in the natural forest without damaging the ecosystem or the environment I started uh, growing coffee what's your philosophy here at uh, at your farm tell us about your farming philosophy my farming uh, philosophy is um, uh, I will say it again to grow coffee without damaging the ecosystem uh, and to help the farmers around uh, who have been doing the same thing for uh, so many years without any change or any improvement into their life so I wanna help them and myself to have uh, a better uh, a better education in the uh, life what do you like most about your own farm when you walk here in the morning or in the evening what do you enjoy most I enjoy most the cleanness of the air and what you see around you is just beautiful trees beautiful flowers and the birds and the nature itself is like mind-blowing the landscape and the streams uh, flowing very clean clean water like in any direction wherever you go it's like never expected that you know exist to be honest to you anywhere in the world but and now just living that in that environment and sometimes thinking it is mine is mind-blowing oh, Gasha tell me about the um, Gesha coffee variety that you have here what what has been your experience with it uh, the Gesha variety is um, it's very interesting uh, coffee coffee variety it is good around here uh, it produce beans from the day you plant it like in two years which is very very unusual and it has very as a coffee drinker all my life it has very unique and interesting and very satisfying flavor uh, and besides that but the coffee plant itself is very hard to maintain and needs so much care and uh, when you 
really take care of it the coffee plant it really grows so high sometimes for it coffee pickers it's very very hard to pick the coffee beans and uh, and anyway, plus uh, in our area this uh, uh, coffee plant seems very very happy so how have you been approaching this um, you've been getting some help from outsiders or how does this work uh, the help I'm getting is on training the farmers and including myself uh, uh, I get help from uh, William Boots of San Francisco and uh, USAID uh, training the farmers in how to take care of their coffee plants from the beginning from planting to all the way to exporting most of the farmers used to do their things the old way you know traditional way of uh, after they picking their coffee they just put the uh, red cherries like for three four days sometimes even for five days in a bag and uh, uh, they take it out whenever they want to dry it and uh, they sell it the way it is and that coffee was usually wasted uh, very very bad way of uh, preparing coffee and it's like they destroy coffee the coffee that way is that uh, they could have they do it in a better way they could have made more money and change their life uh, now with uh, like I said before with uh, Mr. William Boots in USAID with the training we have uh, we're going to collect and teach them how to take care of the very plant first and uh, pick only the red cherries and uh, get it to dry as soon as possible as soon as possible or bring it to us so where we can dry the coffee on raised bait tell me what you did with the farmers to show them better drying practices so wh where did you start what, what steps did you follow at the beginning the end of uh, the beginning of this year uh, I showed them how to dry their coffee on a raised bed instead of uh, just drying it on the soil for that purpose what I did is I gave some of the farmers uh, the chicken wire and the other covering supplies to do it themselves to the others who don't want to do it they can bring the coffee to us and they show them and we do it in our state uh, we dry we dry the coffee and uh, sometimes they come over and they help us at the same time they learn how to prepare a good coffee specialty coffee you actually have been importing yourself sorry exporting yourself to to the US to a well-known uh, importer uh, now you're starting to work with outgrowers and so how do you see that financial model so how, how can you get the extra value you generate back into the hands of the farmers here um, the way I plan that is since I already have been exporting my coffee to the United States uh, to Royal Coffee and uh, usually before we export the coffee we get the contract and the way I'm planning I wanted to do it with the farmer is with the farmers I'm when as soon as I get the contract I'm gonna bring the contract and show them for how much that coffee is sold so they will be able to see for how much their coffee is sold and by how much coffee they brought to our site by which means by the way so they will share the profit for how much they brought and they will see it and it's really very clean very clean and they will see the contract and they will see how much their coffee is sold and uh, we're going to take uh, all our expense in the transportation and the bags and all that stuff come with it 
and they will share the profit. So tell me about, you know, why do you do all of this? Because you, you, you seem to take care a lot for the people that you work with and for the environment. I see this beautiful farm around us. So what's your personal commitment to do this? My uh, personal commitment is uh, on this world. I believe each one of us, if we do something to this planet Earth, we can uh, improve without or live a good life, all of us, for generations to come. And if we don't do something and if we just complain or uh, wait for the other person to do it, uh, probably we will not uh, be able, we will not be able to uh, give our kids or grandkids what uh, we are cherishing now. And uh, at the same time, I'll see it again. Uh, I'm just trying to do, I wish I can do more, but this is my limit and uh, this is what I can do. This is coffee. I never thought I'll be in the business, but it's very interesting and it helped me to see more than I seen before and uh, I, will, I will just do anything as much as I can to uh, keep uh, our planet uh, uh, as green as possible for uh, years to come.